I noticed that, yeah, she has a pattern of like every single thing that remotely sounds a little bit prestigious or a little bit impressive, she would just take that to the nth degree. Like, do you guys remember, this is so random, but um, when she was doing the whole Savage Feminine course with her mom, Sheena, and she told that story about her mom, how her mom's favorite flower was sunflowers. And then so everyone started using the sunflower emoji. And then apparently she said that we made the news. I don't even know, like to this day, I don't know if that's true or what exactly she was talking about, but apparently she claimed that her community made the sunflower emoji trending because of the whole story about Sheena liking sunflowers. And then she just kept saying over and over again that, oh my God, we made the news, you guys. Like we made the news. This is how powerful our collective energy force is, blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, okay, First of all, that's not a noteworthy thing, right? This is the thing. She attaches actual importance to things that are just like strategically, yes, they might have some benefit, but anyone who is actually introspective, anybody who actually is a grounded, healed person who knows their worth, who respects other people, like who respects other human beings as sovereign beings like we are all equal we are all sovereign beings on this planet with valid insights and life experiences and although we may differ in life experience or opinion and things of that nature that doesn't mean that um anyone is more valid than the other right but i feel like she like in her twisted brain she attaches actual importance to certain things that are not actually important like the news is a vehicle right you can either promote propaganda or you can promote actual important cases, like actual uh, crime cases or victims that are of a certain minority that don't normally get represented in the news. Like depending on the powers that be, whoever is controlling the news stations or the news agencies in a certain region, it can be used as a vehicle for good or bad, right? It can be used to spread a good message. It can be used to raise awareness for certain causes that are otherwise hidden from the public, or it can be used as a propaganda tool. And so the fact that even if it was true that like your followers made the sunflower emoji trending to the point where it made it onto the news, which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard, actually, <laughs> now that I think back on it, like now looking back with 2020 vision, that is the dumbest thing I ever heard. Like even if it made the news, it's not important just because you got a sunflower emoji on the news. Do you know what I mean? Like that doesn't raise the importance of your little sunflower story just because your followers or like a certain section of the internet spammed it enough for it to make a blip on the news that doesn't actually mean anything like that doesn't actually attach any more importance to your name she's a cold-blooded animal that's what i'm getting at here like her sense of importance she doesn't have an actual internal locus of control like she doesn't have an internal moral bar barometer through which she can decide definitively for herself this is what i value this is what i find important this is a cause that i feel like morally ethically speaking this is a cause that's worth supporting she only is able to support things or attach her support to things based on what she perceives to be valuable as reflected to her by the outside world whether that be the feedback from her followers or like the news or arbitrary institutions that have Okay, yeah, they have prestige in society, like Ivy League colleges or I don't know, like whatever her her definition of 1% people are. You know, on the one hand, she says that, well, in her family or in Irfan's side of the family, there's doctors and lawyers, etc. So on the one hand, you're saying that, okay, those people are part of the 1% of society. Fair enough. You can make a, like, that's not something that everyone has to agree with, but you can make a sound argument for that, right? You can say that those people are intellectuals. They spend a lot of time studying certain fields. At the end of the day, even if you feel like, I happen to subscribe to this belief that a doctor and like a cashier, somebody that works at Starbucks, all of those people are of inherent value, right? Just because one happens to earn more and maybe garner more respect in society doesn't mean that one is more valid or like better than somebody that's working at the cash register at Starbucks. But you could argue there are people out there that 
could argue that, well, you know, in order to become a doctor, though, it takes more effort, it takes more directed energy into one field of study, like you have to study and you have to have a lot of discipline, uh, you have to stick with the same area of study for years on end, even if it's difficult, even if the job market fluctuates, right, like maybe it's hard to get a job in healthcare during the time that you're studying it, but you still stick it through, like all of the qualities that require you to obtain something like a, I don't know, like a license to practice surgery or whatever, you could say that that alone, like all of those factors combined, make you a higher quality person, like a 1% person. And then like as a cause and effect, you happen to call in more money that way, right? Comes from like your ability to be a consistent person and to persevere, dedicate yourself to a certain cause for a long period of time, regardless of what's going on around you. And so like as a natural consequence of the law of the universe, abundance is going to come to you later in the form of money. That would make sense. But like the thing is that she, you know that her reasoning is BS because she cannot stick to one definition of what she finds to be 1%. Because on the one hand, she likes to brag that, oh, I have such an amazing network. Like I married into a really good family because Irfan's relatives are all doctors and engineers and lawyers, etc. Like, okay, fair enough. I'm not disputing that. But then in the second breath, she tries to place herself above those people. I actually barely do anything. I just get paid to exist because I just come onto YouTube and do live streams and then people pay tight to me, all my subscribers, they just give me thousands of dollars without questioning it because my vibe and my energy is so high. So actually, I earn more than all of the doctors and lawyers, etc. in Irfan's family combined. So that places me above them even. And it's like, okay, but now you're measuring by pure monetary income amount, right? So now she's changing, like she's always changing her goalposts. She's always changing her standards because she doesn't have any. She doesn't actually have any because she's a covert narcissist, right? Or overt narcissist. I don't know what the official term is, but like that's what narcissists do. They don't actually have any internal standards or um, code of ethics within themselves. They just latch onto whatever the world reflects back to them, which is actually just their own insecurities, right? Because that's what's like in their field of vision. That is the thing that's most amplified. Whatever insecurity they have, they believe that that must be the barometer by which to measure value for every person. And then so they like spend all their energy, all their time trying to reach that arbitrary line. But then once they reach it, they find out like everyone else that it was just an arbitrary line the whole time. Like you cannot, that, this is why you cannot base your whole self-worth and self-concept on outside measures. This is why it's important to decide for yourself what your code of conduct and what your moral beliefs are.